We Glad have this crisis in Europe, a true crisis, a war going on in Europe. Uh, first and foremost, of course, it's about the Ukrainian people, what they're going through, even as we speak. But it also has ramifications for investors. What do you see right now as ramifications? Are there some uh, sectors that are uninvestable today that weren't a month ago? Well, I think, first of all, the answer is I think there are places that are uninvestable that were investable a month ago. Uh, but I also think that it, uh, for an investor, uh, this is a level of uncertainty uh, that we haven't had to deal with. And, uh, you know, if you're an investor today uh, and you were investing in Russia, mm. how do you feel about your investments in China? Uh, how do you feel about your investments in other places in the world uh, that have not responded to the Ukraine uh, invasion uh, the way we would have expected. Um, uh, so I think that, if anything, I think that uh, as an investor, I think you stay closer to home. And I don't think you become uh, as involved or, or a believer in globalization uh, as you might have, you know, six months ago. Are there some things that are more attractive today than we were before? I mean, for example, gold. Where are you on gold these days? Well, I said that I had bought some gold for the first time in my life. Uh, I historically viewed gold as non-income producing uh, base metal, uh, but I think that uh, the way in which fiat currencies have been, uh, you know, extended and uh, printed, uh, the more I get concerned about whether or not, uh, you know, we're going to see weakness in the value of the dollar or even loss of its reserve stature. So I bought some gold, uh, and I think that, you know, some gold ought to be a part of every, every investor's uh, balance. But I'm not, haven't turned into a gold bug or, <laughs> or believe that uh, it ought to be a big chunk of anybody's portfolio. So what about energy? You've been involved in energy through yep. the years. Energy's very much in the center right now, given what's going on with, uh, for example, the ban for U.S. on uh, Russian oil inputs, the price of oil, for goodness sakes. Who would have thought? Where are you on energy investments right now? Well, I've always believed that diversification is your friend. And I've always attempted to have some kind of energy diversification and continue to do so. Uh, I think the U.S. government uh, attitude about energy and the Biden administration in particular I think is extraordinarily naive, and I think the price of, of oil is very much a fact that uh, they've sent this message, whether it be blocking pipelines or, uh, or making permitting impossible to get, uh, including, you know, banks basically saying, you know, when, when, you're, you know, when your uh, revolver comes due, we're not going to renew it because we've got to get low, we've got to reduce our energy exposure. Uh, the transition from uh, fossil fuels to uh, renewables is going to be a very long process. And we're acting as though it's going to be a next week process. And I think that's very dangerous and I think it's going to lead to overpriced fossil fuel when there is no choice as to its need. There are reports this week that the Biden administration may be rethinking some of what they've said and done when it comes to fossil fuels and are reaching out even to the oil industry. Uh, is that feasible to turn around, at least to some extent, on that issue? As an investor, uh, can you go and back into, for example, shale oil and really reinvest in that? Or are you too nervous about whether they'll stick to their, well, their but, new policy? You know, I, first of all, I don't believe there is a new policy. Second of all, I mean, you know, at the same time that Biden was uh, prohibiting, you know, import of Russian oil, he was doubling down on, you know, renewables and blocking pipelines, etc. So, whether or not the administration has given thought to that, uh, it certainly doesn't appear to be the case. And even if it did make a statement to that, I wonder, as an investor, how much I would trust it. And how much, how much in the way of guarantees I would demand before I would allocate more capital into fossil fuels. So for you right now, as you look at it, given what you know, uh, going back into shale in a big way is not a, a particularly attractive alternative. Yeah, we have shale investments today. Yeah. We continue to have them. Uh, we're not eliminating them. Uh, but 
the natural expansion that would come with rising prices has also not occurred because the administration is so negative and, and so discouraging. What about other alternatives for the administration in trying to uh, do something about the price of crude, but also natural gas? For example, Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia could increase their, uh, their output substantially. They seem to be reluctant to do that. Venezuela, you know, the forbidden Venezuela, maybe you could get that back on, and even Iran. But do you want to do all of that while you're inhibiting uh, made in America fossil fuels? That just doesn't make any sense. What is Venezuela going to do with the resources that are going to come from releasing sanctions? They're not going to be friendly to the United States. That doesn't make sense. Uh, I mean, the whole idea of, uh, of the administration being focused on getting the Iran uh, population back in, in the world while they're propagating uh, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff you know, all over the Middle East just doesn't make any sense, giving them the resources to do that. Last time we did that, the first thing they did was they financed Hezbollah and, and various other terrorist groups. So that, you know, we got to be supporting domestic policy. We got to be supporting domestic fossil fuels. We ought to be realistic about the fact that a transition will occur but it's not going to occur because somebody in Congress or somebody in the White House thinks tomorrow would be a good idea. It's got to occur based on a pragmatic assessment of how long it will take and what level of upheaval it will cause. Uh, Sam, we started this conversation with you saying there's a lot of uncertainty given what's going on in Ukraine, what's going on in Europe. As an investor, how do you deal with this sort of geopolitical uncertainty? Do you, on the one hand, say, I don't know what's going to happen, so I just have to get more conservative, draw my uh, horses in, maybe go into cash, for example? Or do you try to game it out and think it could go this way, it could go that way, and this is the way I should put my bets? I can't speak for any other investor. I can only speak for myself. Uh, and the result from, for myself is added liquidity, uh, not gaming it, because in effect we have no, we've proven beyond a reasonable doubt that as prognosticators of what Putin may or may not do uh, is almost impossible to assess. And certainly we've been wrong over and over again. So I think diversification, liquidity, uh, patience, uh, are really the governing factors in terms of how we might uh, respond to the uncertainties that this current environment is creating. 